Once you guys got another video, don't download that file. That's what I see quite a few times in the comments section, and it's normally to do with files when you download them off the internet, say something like this one. And it could be any type of file, really. When you download it, your PC might flag it as a malicious piece of software or file. And this is normally what we class as either a false positive or it's a piece of malware. You can see your browser right here might flag a file like this one and it will say et-optimizer.exe isn't commonly downloaded. Make sure you trust this file. And basically that's what it's warning you. Your browser, this is the first initial warning that your system will give you about this file. And it's normally saying, hold on a second, wait before you download this because it could be a virus or a piece of malware. Are you sure you want to download it? Now, people will shout false positive, and that's normally because the website where you download the file from normally tells you that your antivirus program may uh, flag this as a virus. And you can see here, it says et-optimizer.exe, publisher unknown. That means they don't know the publisher of this file is. And again, this is normally a reason why it gets flagged as well. So you can see show more. You can either delete the file at this stage as one more protection step is saying delete it, but you can also use show more on the drop arrow and you can either report this app as a safe file or you can keep it anyway or delete it and you can learn more about it. Now, this is your Microsoft Defender smart screen protecting your PC. And remember, this can be any actual file you're downloading off the internet. So we've downloaded it anyway. And the next thing we're going to do is upload it to Virus Total. And we're going to quickly test here. And I'm pretty sure when I upload this, it's going to tell us whether this file is malicious or not. And because of the nature of the file, this will normally be flagged and you will see a ton of uh, flags on this file saying it's malicious. And should you believe everything you see here? Well, sometimes the nature of the file can determine what sort of results you get. So, for instance, this nature of file is going to make changes to the operating system. And this will sometimes be flagged as a false positive. Now, a false positive is when you're system security tool which is your antivirus will incorrectly identify a legitimate file or activity of that file as a threat and that's what a false positive is but is this a false positive well the only way you'll find out whether this is a false positive or not is if someone has done some form of analysis on this file you can't take someone's word for it and that includes my word for it you have to take that assessment yourself and look into the file yourself before you download and install it on your PC. And we're not just talking about this file, we're talking about every file that you're going to be downloading off the internet and putting onto your system and then clicking on it and executing it. Because that's how malware or viruses get onto the system and infect your PC. All computer viruses or malware that gets installed on the PC is normally done by user error. They've clicked on a file or a link or downloaded some malicious application and installed it on the system. If we go back to the website, you normally get something like this where it says antiviruses may uh, falsely detect this as a threat. It's recommended to back up your data and he takes no responsibility for any damages that may be caused. This right here is a common thing that a lot of creators of programs like this will put on their website. And really, you should take this with a pinch of salt. Now, he may be speaking the truth and it may be a false positive. But also what you've got to understand is there may be some malicious intent there. And it may be the fact that he wants you to disable your antivirus program so you can inject his piece of malware onto the computer. So always take that with a pinch of salt when someone says, just disable your antivirus program and run the application. It's a false positive and it will be fine. You can see here, Explorer Patcher does exactly the same thing. Warning, Explorer Patcher has a history of being falsely detected as malware by antivirus programs such as Windows Defender. It's likely due to the behavior of that application and what it's doing to the reason why it gets flagged. Now, should you take this person's opinion on it? And the answer to that is no, you shouldn't. 
and you shouldn't take anyone's opinion. At the end of the day, it's your responsibility to do your own checks on the file before you run it on your PC. Because a malicious piece of software is designed to harm a computer or your network, and it's also could be a virus, a worm, or a Trojan horse, ransomware, spyware, or rootkit, or a backdoor, or any of that sort of stuff that gets onto the system, and their main intention may be to get it onto the system so they can then do whatever they want to do. So when you click on these files, they suddenly get flagged by your browser, and it's because it's an unknown publisher and also the nature of the program which will be flagged. And again, you can click on the three dots here and it will give you a warning. Now, if you follow these simple guidelines, you will not get infected. Your PC will never be infected. Unfortunately, people just ignore a lot of this stuff and just start trusting what people say on their website and downloading and running things on their PC. Now, I'm not saying that all these programs are malicious and they are malware. It's just that false positive gets used so freely nowadays and people don't understand what it is and they have no proof to back it up to say that it's a false positive. So once you get malware on the system, for instance, if you have a virus, this could be self-replicating malware that infects other files. And also you might have a worm in that uh, particular file. And this is self-replicating malware that, uh, you know, travels across all your network. And then you've got Trojan horses, which are malware disguised as legitimate software, like what we see here. And then you've got ransomware, which is what you could click on. If this file was a ransomware file, it would then encrypt all of your data and you will be held to ransom until you pay the ransom and they will send you a decryption key, which is never guaranteed. And then there's spyware, which is just malware that collects information about without the user's knowledge. So these are the sort of things that you can fall foul to if you go downloading these files. So Talon was another one I did a video on that got heavily flagged by you know, the browser and then also by the antivirus program, it start, it's blocking it and deleting it from the computer, saying it was malicious. And sometimes these people that create these files will also have some written tutorial on their web page telling you how to exclude the file so it doesn't get flagged. And you should never really be doing this either because unless you know 100% that this file is safe, and it's, uh, you know, a false positive, then you shouldn't be running it. And you should take no one else's opinion apart from your own. And if you don't understand what that is, then you shouldn't be clicking on running things on your PC. Because regardless of how cool these programs are and what a good job they do at debloating Windows, they can be malicious and they can be putting things in the background like rootkits and nasty stuff in the background running and uh, like a botnet or something like that. And you would never know until you start having signs that your PC is acting really peculiar. And by then it's too late. Now I'm using these files as an example because I know they will get flagged because of the nature of the file and what it's doing. And when you're wrapping a file into an executable file, that is even more likely to get flagged rather than, say, some sort of PowerShell script. And PowerShell scripts and batch files and all these other files that you can download off the internet, these are also very dangerous too if you don't know what they're doing in the background. And this goes for any particular type of program, including tools like Chris Titus Text Tool. If you don't understand the nature of the tool and what it's doing to your system and, you know, and you're downloading it and running it and you're taking that risk, you have to... Be careful because you just don't know what the intent is of the creator. And I'm not suggesting for one second that this tool is malicious. But again, if it's a PowerShell tool or if it's an executable file, which I do think you can get the executable file if you pay. But I do know that he has paid for a license and that's, uh, you know, the right way to go forward with these things. So people talk about PowerShell scripts and I tell people all the time, use at your own risk and don't run this unless you understand what you're running on your PC. Because if you don't understand what you're looking at right here and what changes that's going to make to your PC, then you shouldn't run it. 
Now also everyone has different needs on a computer. So running a script that does a bunch of things in the background, it might disable a bunch of settings that you might need because everyone has different requirements on their PC. So one size does not fit all. So just running one piece of batch file or a PowerShell script or even an application that does things in the background, it might disable a bunch of stuff that you need and then by then it's been removed and you can't put it back in some cases and you might need to do a fresh install and I see it quite a lot. So the risk factor is quite big when you're downloading programs like I've showed you, especially if they're getting flagged already. And yes, they could be a false positive, but you only know they're a false positive if you do analysis on those files. And the only way you can do that is if you know what you're doing. And you can use tools that will analyze the file and it will basically test the file to see what the file is doing in the background, whether it's connecting out to some other server or whether it's downloading other files in the background and things like that. And these programs will be able to analyze that particular uh, application that you've downloaded. But again, you're going to need to know what you're doing and a lot of people don't. And this is where the problem lies. So creating these programs is great. They are useful. But unless you're 100% sure, you shouldn't be running it on your PC. And this is why a lot of people will always put some sort of advisory on there saying, you know, use at your own risk. I will not be held responsible for any damages to your computer or loss of data. And they won't offer any sort of support. So it's used at your own risk. And a lot of people do this with these applications. And this is the thing that you have to understand. Now, you can use software on your PC as well to determine uh, whether there's a malicious file running in the background and they can be detected via these methods and you can upload them to VirusTotal to detect whether you've been infected. Again, this is for another video, but I'm just pointing out the fact that you can use software to analyze your system as well. And there's loads of other software out there as well. Your antivirus is your best friend at the end of the day. If that's sending alarm bells out and saying this file is malicious, you should heed what it's saying and do some investigation before you click on the file and run it. And we're not talking about any file in particular. We're just talking in general, any file you download off the internet. And as a rule of thumb, you really shouldn't be disabling your antivirus program to run any applications on your PC because that is uh, risky at best and you really shouldn't be doing it uh, no matter what program it is and no matter how much someone says it's safe you shouldn't be doing it another thing you shouldn't be doing is adding a exclusion for that file to be run on your pc this will allow authorization to for that file to be run even if you've got an antivirus program that's a big no-no you shouldn't be doing that if it's getting flagged it's down to the creator to uh, pay for licensing to get that program to be able to run on your pc now, antivirus programs can also, you know, check processes and things like that, malicious files, network activity. You can do a lot of that stuff with your antivirus program. But like I said, follow the simple rules. Another big no-no is downloading files that have been uh, zipped up and they've got a password on them. If they've got a password on them, your antivirus program cannot scan that zipped file uh, with a password on it. So remember... Uh, be very careful if they are putting passwords on them because that's because they don't want it to be scanned uh, by your antivirus program. So be careful with anything you extract from those onto your system and then clicking on things. And also don't click on any uh, links from people that you don't know or even from people that you do know because their system could be compromised or their account could be compromised and they are uh, the hacker or the bot is sending you malicious links and you'll click on them and you're going to get infected. So be very, very careful. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.